church. We stand and sing with us this morning as we celebrate the fact that we serve a God who's bigger than our troubles. Amen.
morning. Is that good news? There we go. Do you mind handing me that slip there right there, Gabe? That blue one? Thank you. Thanks, bud. All right. Uh, I want to say today's a special day, okay? So to all those in the room who are women, we want to honor you. We want to honor you today. I know it's Mother's Day, but how many of you, like me, had a woman in your life or maybe a few women in your life that mothered you? That's a verb, you know? That's a verb. So today, can we just honor everyone here that's a female and honor the women that went before you that mothered you invest in your life by saying happy Mothered Day, amen? Amen, will you give it up for them? Thank you. And in honor of the families that are here today, we have a, a booth outside um, for Mother Day. And uh, if you want to get your photo done as a family, that is there for you. We'll have a professional for, uh, photographer after the service from 12 to 1. So go ahead and go out there, get your photo, have a good time. If you want your photo, um, the only way to get it is to fill this out. Okay. If you are a member here, this is already done. You already are on our email list. But if you're a guest of ours, want to say welcome to you or glad you're here. And we'd love to get you your photos as well. If you'll leave this for us, this is our Connect card. It has, if you'll put your email on it, we can send you this week a password protected uh, page in our website that'll give you all your photos, give you access. We just don't want to um, just put your photos out there to the world. Amen. So if you want them, fill this out. Also, second incentive, if you fill this out today as your guest of ours, and just drop it in the box in the back or on the way before you leave. What we're going to do is we're going to honor you today by giving in your honor to ministries we partner with. We are planning churches in Western Africa. We are serving the underserved uh, population of foster kids who need foster placement here in our city. We will give money in your honor just for filling this out today to one of those ministries that we partner with. So another, so, so please fill this out. And today before you go, uh, when we don't want anything more from you. We want to give in your honor. We don't want to ask for anything from you. Amen? So please do that. Members, hey, when it comes to uh, investing, okay, and then when we say investing in the gospel, we worship with the tithe and offering. We'll do that at the end of the service. But today's a special day uh, because you're going to see the fruit of that today. Today, we have eight families coming today to dedicate their children. Amen? We are called to make disciples, and those families are the lead disciplers, those parents in the lives of their but we, we know it takes a village, and we're going to help lift their arms and so they charge for us today, amen, as the church. And so when you're investing, these are some of the things you're investing in. Y'all pray today for Pastor Will, our next gen pastor. He's going to be giving that charge today to us and to these families, but he's also bringing the message today. And he and I have been co-writing through Titus, and I'm excited to hear from him today. So you be praying for him as he does come. Last announcement, and i just point it to... Uh, if you do not have the New Hope Hermitage app, if you don't have that app, I want to encourage you to download it. Because all the announcements that I've just said to you come to us weekly through that app. You'll get notifications about things that are coming up, special announcements. If you're about to miss a date, that comes through our app. So you can always find it on the website, but the app just keeps you notified. And the last one is this. Today, we're headed back to Africa, October 2nd. Today's the deadline for your application. If you're interested, thinking about it, just because you fill that out does not commit you to Africa. But we are going for 10 days. We are going intently to plant four more churches in Busia, Kenya in October. Amen? Yeah. So if that interests you, if you're curious, we ask you to fill out that application. If you're not sure how to get to it, to our Facebook page. John and I made a post this week. The link is there. Fill it out. It'll come in. We will call you. We'll follow up and we'll start due process. All right. We're here to encounter Jesus. We're not here for just a religious experience. We have a lot going on today, but we want to encounter him. And if he doesn't come, it's not, it's not worth our gathering. It's just in vain. So Jesus, we ask that you would come. We are here for you. We ask your spirit, move in our midst right now. We ask you to anoint everything we do and you anoint the families here to be dedicated. God, we want to honor women. We thank you that you love them more than we could ever think or ask. And we just ask that they 
feel a special sense of your presence today. Stir by your spirit in these pews. Anoint this message today. Jesus, may we just leave here having met with you as you revive our hearts, our minds, and point us closer to the next steps we can have with you. Today may be the day of salvation. Today may be the day of further intimacy with you. For those who know you, we ask you to have your way with us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. How many know that there have been times in your life where God has proven himself over and over and over again? Amen. It's the good news that we get to walk in the confidence that we serve a God who is faithful to us and always provides for us. Amen.
Shine unto 
ocean poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, our children this morning as we come in to uh, dedicate these children to you, God. I pray that you are pleased this morning. Jesus, we pray that you come and you meet with us. Do what only you can do. God, we trust that your way is better. And we do love you. So Jesus, I pray that you just come, speak through will this morning as he brings your word. And have your way. God, we love you. pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Be seated. Well, good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day to all of you women here. If you are visiting with us, if this is your first Sunday with us, allow me to introduce myself, or um, if you just don't know who I am, allow me to introduce myself, I suppose. My name is Will Earls, and I am the next-gen pastor here, which is simply a fancy title, meaning someone who is over leadership over birth to 25 years of age. And so if you have a child that is in preschool or a toddler or uh, elementary school, me, Gwen, and Daniel cover elementary school, preschool. Um, if you have a youth aged kid, that is essentially me and my leadership with our youth ministry team, and hopefully, once, uh, once we get moving on some certain things, we will develop a ministry here 
for young adults, for college-aged uh, individuals, and I look so forward to doing that. Um, if, if it is your first Sunday here in a little while, we have been going through Paul's letter to Titus, and uh, J- Justin, Pastor Justin has preached three different sermons on that so far, and today we are entering into Titus chapter 2. So go ahead and open to Titus chapter 2 today. If you are a child, if you were in elementary school, hopefully you got a coloring packet, okay? On the back side of that coloring packet, there is a, a, a section for you guys to take notes in. Just because we're not in children's church today doesn't mean the sermon isn't for you guys as well. So if you are in kindergarten, first, second, third, whatever grade you were in, go ahead and flip over to that. Uh, just so I can get, uh, give you guys a little bit of background to get us to Titus chapter 2 today. Titus chapter 1, Paul's letter to Titus, it starts off in verse 1 saying, Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And this is why he writes right here. For the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth which, which accords with godliness. So right out the gate, Titus chapter 1, verse 1, Titus, or Paul, tells us that the, this letter to Paul is for our knowledge in which our knowledge is going to breed our godliness. From very early on, Paul makes this statement that uh, there is this inseparable link between faith and practice. That there is this inseparable link between belief and behavior. And that's what we're going to be following along today. Our our first um, chapter, we read a lot about leadership, right? So Paul writes to Titus saying, here, these are the qualifications for elders. You need help setting up these churches in Crete. And so these are men that you should be looking for who meet these qualifications who can help you in ministry. The the latter part of chapter 1, Paul tells Titus, these are some areas in which you can install church discipline because there are people within your congregation who are going to, if not already, cause trouble. They're going to be disrupting entire families, is what Paul says. And you need to get to the root of that before this even happens. There's disruptions already occurring, and so you need to make sure, Titus, that you keep these churches in check. And the reason for this is because we did not want, Paul did not want the churches to communicate a gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't want the the young, unbelieving churches in Crete, or those who were just now coming to the faith in Jesus Christ, to distort the gospel in any way. And, And my fear is today, even though we have been in America where churches have been for generations, my fear is is that we are more used to coming to church instead of coming to Jesus, okay? And so today, what happens in in Titus chapter 2 is Paul uh, begins telling Titus, your message should create within people these kind of outcomes, okay? And so today, we're going to see how does the way Paul or Titus teach, how does the way that Titus teach How does that change people's behavior? So sound lessons was the first three weeks. As we move into chapter two this week and next week, we will be talking about sound lessons and truly how truth has transformed us, okay? So let's pick up in in Titus chapter two. We're gonna read verses one through 10, start off. Paul writes, But as for you, teach what account accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and steadfastness. Older women likewise are to be irreverent in their behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. And so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self 
self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything. They are not to be well pleasing. I'm sorry. They are they are to be well pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adorn the doctrine of our of God our Savior. Titus chapter two verse one starts off with, "But you are to teach." Okay. If we look uh, back at chapter 1, uh, verse, I'm sorry, chap- chapter 1, verse 16, it is a scary warning to the church. T- Titus chapter 1, verse 16 says, they profess to know God, but they deny him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient. Unfit for any good work. In Titus chapter 2, it's like this bridging verse where on one hand, there are these people within the church who are testing or who are teaching these things and they're not living out the gospel in their life. And the scary thing here is Paul says these people who are professing to know Jesus Christ but are not living out their uh, living out their faith, they are detestable. Hear that word today, detestable. They are disobedient, and they are unfit for any good work. But Paul, as he writes to Titus, he says, but you, you are not to be like this, Titus. But you do what? Teach what accords with sound doctrine. Titus chapter two, verse one, is this bridge verse, okay? It connects chapter one with chapter two, where Paul is, or Titus is now instructed to, you have to lead your people well. If you teach what accords with sound doctrine, then everything that we cover in these next verses will happen. So church, this is what I want you guys to know about the way that we at New Hope Hermitage respect this pulpit. I am not here today to uh, to share my opinions with you. Whenever Justin, John, Daniel, whoever, Mike Livingston, whoever takes this stage, We don't take this stage to share our opinions with you. We come to share the word of God with you. Because our opinions in the the scheme of eternity do not matter. If we are to teach what accords with sound doctrine, we must be teaching people what God has said to his people. There's no need for us to build upon it. And so I want you guys to understand whenever you come in here to this place, this pulpit is going to be respected. Where we are going to teach not our own opinions, but what God has called us to profess to you, his people. Now, now here's the thing. Uh, some of you guys might have already tuned me out, right? I, I understand that, right? We, we get in that mode of I come to church, there's this preacher He's drawing on and on, and my attention span, like 15-second TikToks, right? Or reels on Facebook. I just can't, I, I can't hold the attention to the pastor. We don't stand here to teach you guys so it goes in one ear and out the other, okay? Uh, we spend a lot of time preparing for these messages, but it's not just so that you hear them. The reason we come to church is to hear the word of God so that we can therefore take the word of God outside. And so if when you leave this building, you leave without have ever heard, hearing something, if you, if you leave this building without having the, uh, the ability to take what we've studied here today and teach it to other people, then we have failed. Then you are more used to going to church rather than going to Jesus. This is a meeting place for us to come together as the body of Christ, study his word, so that we can therefore take it outside of these walls. You know, you guys hearing what I'm saying, you're going to remember maybe about 5% of what I say. If you hear in a lecture, you're going to remember about 5% of what you heard. But here's the thing. 
if you prepare a lesson to teach to somebody according to our EMAW group, our D group book, you, you remember about 90%. Guys, may we come here with the attitude to church that I'm going to be preparing my lesson to take out to the world. Let's, let's have that attitude. Not that I'm just here for a preacher to speak words to me, but that I am here readying my soul to take the word of God outside. That's why we're here. That's why we gather. And so that's what Paul is preaching here to Titus. Teach what accords with sound doctrine. Now, all of this goes to, to show, okay, if, if you're telling me that if the preacher preaches what accords with sound doctrine, I need to respond in some kind of way. What is that response to be to hearing the word of God? Here's one thing I want you guys to take away. Me, Daniel, John, Mike, whoever is up here speaking, we don't care to hear good job at the end of a service. Okay? Please, if you hear one thing from me, don't tell me good job. If you tell me good job, I'll know you that you didn't listen to me, okay? <laughs> we cool with that? We're on the same page. We don't care to hear good job. We want to see actions taken. We want to see you grow more and more in your relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to see the actions that you take in response to the sermon. And so the response to hearing a sermon at church should not be verbal, okay? Point number one, the response to sound teaching is not verbal. It's not good job or, ooh, did you hear that preacher today? Did you hear that one point? It's not verbal. It's actionable. The response to sound teaching should drive your actions. And that's what we see here in Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 2. It says, older men are to be sober-minded. In response to sound teaching, this is the way that older men should be. It says later on, I believe it's in verse 6, that older, I'm sorry, verse 3, older women likewise are to be, it's not say. Sound teaching drives our actions. Later on in verse 9, it says, bond servants are to be submissive to their own actions, or to their own masters. And so our response, may our response to sound teaching not just be, hey, good job, or hey, I appreciate that sermon or that quote or whatever. May it be, man, this is the way that I need to be living out my life. Because I'm not just going to church, I'm going to Jesus. And he impacts everything. Now, there would be one very easy caveat for all of you guys to tune out. Because this passage today speaks to who? Women and men, but specifically older women. And older, women, or older men. And so it would be so easy for you guys today to say, well, I don't consider myself older, and so uh, this, this passage ain't for me. Right? How many, well, I would have, how many women in here would consider themselves an older woman? Or even, I love the way the KJV puts it. The KJV says, an aged woman. Y'all want to be aged women? Oh, man, I see hands. I'm surprised. Right? Okay. Some of y'all going to own it. That's great. That's great. This, we're aged, right? Like fine wine, baby. Like fine wine. Not like that stinky cheese or anything like that, okay? Uh, gracefully, beautifully, everything, that's right. It's, it'd be so easy for us to say, man, I'm not, a, I'm not an older woman, I'm not an older man, this passage isn't for me. This passage, these scriptures don't point to a stage in life, okay? It points to a process. Because you are always going to have people in your life that are older than you. Unless you were August Hayes in here, August Hayes boss, you're probably going to have somebody that's uh, younger than you as well. And so what Paul is writing to, to Titus and saying is, hey, you older men are to be this to the younger men. You older women are to be this for the, the younger women. Here's the thing, guys. Hopefully throughout your life, you have not just been sitting on a pew and hearing people talk to you. There should be this process for you where I'm growing in the Lord, and the reason that I'm growing in the Lord is so that I can teach people how to follow Jesus. 
Because here at New Hope Permanent, we don't care about people coming to church. I don't want our next-gen ministries to grow up knowing how to come to church. I want them to grow up and know how to be the church. And so hopefully as, as we age, as we spend time in church, we're growing and we're learning that way that we can therefore teach other people who were in a life, st life stage just before us. I can tell you there have been uh, times in my life where if it were not for people at DNI's last church pouring into our marriage as young people, we would be divorced. I, I remember going into their house, into the man's office, and we're saying, all right, dude, we're, we're done. We can't do it. Marriage is too hard. She is too different for me. She don't understand me, and Dia's like, all he does is talk. He doesn't do anything, right? And so in this, if we didn't have those people who had been there pouring into us, man, we wouldn't have known what to do except for end it, right? And so what this points to is a process. We are to teach those that we're ahead of and we are to learn from those that were behind, okay? So here's what we need to take from this. Number one, be teachable. Your learning process should never end. Be teachable and also be intentional in teaching others. We have been blessed here at New Hope. And in the eight months that I've been here, uh, we have a lot of amazing kids uh, who are flooding our next-gen ministries. Our youth ministry is is growing and flourishing. And uh, I, I'm so honored to be a, a small part of all that. Amen. The truth is, guys, I can't handle that all by myself. Me, Daniel, and Gwen can't handle all of children by ourselves. Me and our youth leader team can't handle all of youth ministry by ourselves. So we have to be willing to be the church, and that's exactly what Paul is telling Titus here. May you preach in a way that brings people to action. May you preach in a way where people realize, I've got to be intentional in teaching others. You should never reach a point in your life where you stop learning and start teaching. Just as well, you should... Uh, never be waiting for a time in your life to start teaching. This is a process where you are learning and where you are sharing. And that process begins as soon as you come to salvation in Jesus Christ. As soon, I don't care if you're eight years old here today. When you trust in Jesus Christ, when you give your life over to him, you now get to share that experience with kids your age who are unbelievers. You now get to say, hey, you know what Jesus has done to my life? Right? If you're eight years old, if you're, if you're a fourth or fifth grader in here, I know you've heard me and Daniel both say it, all right? If you are a fourth or fifth grader in here, we expect things from you. We expect you to be able to be responsible and help us with the kindergartner, first and second graders. You're supposed to help show them what children's ministry about is about and start showing them how to follow Jesus in that. Same way with my high schoolers. I need you to help disciple the children, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the middle schoolers. We have so many uh, youth that serve in our children's ministry because they've got to learn how I can communicate the gospel to other people. There's not a time in your life where Jesus says, yeah, once you turn 30, then you can start. It's as soon as you accept Jesus Christ we go on, we've talked about, okay, if you teach this sound doctrine, then people should respond like this. And we've got to the point of the message where it's like, really, what should I be doing? Okay, Paul addresses certain attitudes here. How, how should I be doing? Uh, what should I be saying? That kind of stuff. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time going through verses 2 through 10. The reason for that is because your life, your life groups this week can attack that. Your life groups can look at, hey, what does it look like for me to be an older woman and teach younger women? 
hey, what does God call out of us men? There are a few things that I do want to highlight in these verses, though. Men, your charges are in verse 2 and verse 6. I love that it calls us to be self-controlled. If you are a man like me, I hope you're not in this area, but if you're a man like me, that is tough, bro. That's my wife sitting over here. Self-control is something that I struggle with, and it's something that the Lord has had to show me. It's not about me being better in self-control. It's about me giving up control so that the Holy Spirit consumes me, right? And so all of these things that we're going to look at here isn't about, hey, how can I be better as a man or as a woman? All of these characteristics are, how can I surrender to the Holy Spirit? How can I allow the Holy Spirit to move in me and allow me to be more self-controlled? How he can teach me to be submissive to my husband. Any women who struggle with that in here, don't raise your hands. Husbands, just go ahead and give him a slight elbow, right? It's tough. Being submissive, right? There are all these different things, and, and these verses don't just hit on those two things that we struggle with. But really, um, it just shows us how in our own sinfulness, we can never hit the mark. You can never be good enough in this. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit and he makes you into a new creation in this because of teaching sound doctrine. Verses seven through eight, I really want to hit on because I think seven through eight really sums up all of two through, two through 10, okay? Because seven through eight speak to everybody in this. Show yourself in all respects. If you have a pen in your Bible, Circle that. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opportunity may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Show yourself in all respects. Number one thing there is show yourself. We need you here at church. This church needs your consistency. This church's next generation needs you to be here and be committed to them. To, in all respects, show them what it looks like to follow Jesus. Number one, show yourself. Be committed to your home. Don't be stuck at work all the time when you can help it. Okay? Show yourself here at church, be here, grace the doors of this place so that you can plug into this next generation and teach them what it means to follow Jesus. And I love this, show yourself in all respects. In every way, may you be a beacon of light to the next generation. In all of your struggles, showing them what it looks like to follow Jesus. I wanna end with this, verse nine. I don't want to avoid, somebody already said, ooh, you got the, the women are stay at home passage, right? Oof. I don't mean to avoid that, okay? Just like I don't want to avoid verse nine. Verse nine talks about slaves. Slaves, what it says is, verse nine says, uh, bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters. One thing that I want you guys to realize is Paul is not saying that slavery is okay in this section, okay? Actually, in the book right next to it in Philemon, Paul tells uh, Philemon to allow his slave to come back to him, his runaway slave to come back to him, and Paul tells Philemon, accept him as a brother, not just a bondservant, okay? He used to be your brother, not your slave. Paul is not, he's not saying, uh, given his approval of slavery. Actually, I want to point how verse 9, the address, uh, Paul addressing bond servants, is still him addressing us. And I'm not even talking about you with your boss at work. Paul, in verse 9, says, bond servants are, be, are to be submissive to their own masters 
in everything. They are to be well-pleasing. You realize in the beginning of this book itself, Paul calls himself a bondservant. Paul says, I am a slave to Jesus Christ. And so Paul, these are the same exact words. Paul sees himself as a slave to Jesus Christ. And so when Paul addresses Titus and these churches and how they're supposed to respond to sound doctrinal teaching, Paul is saying, you guys be like me. Be, Be slaves to Jesus Christ. And in that, he says, may you be well pleasing to God. May you be submissive in everything to Jesus Christ. Is that you today? Have you truly surrendered to Jesus? Have you truly said, yeah, I I, I get that I need to follow Jesus with everything that I have. I need to make sure that I surrender my life to him, and I need to make sure that I'm fulfilling the great commission, what Jesus has called me to do. Or are you kind of holding back? Are you going to church, not being the church? Are you going to church, not going to Jesus? Jesus calls us to total surrender. And Paul here in this passage calls us to total surrender as well. I recognize that today is a joyous occasion for a lot of you. You have your families here. I see so many families out here, and it's wonderful I am so happy that we get to dedicate. We have eight families who have said, I want to dedicate my child to the Lord. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so thankful for that. Mother's Day is such a joyous occasion for a lot. But it's also terribly heartbreaking for a lot as well. Romans chapter 12 verse 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And there's no better day for us to live that verse out. Here in a second, I'm going to be calling eight families up here who the Lord has blessed with a gift from God, with their lovely children. But Mother's Day, for people here in this room, online, even outside this church, can be an immense struggle. Because there are people in this room and outside who have said, you know what, I have never been able to have children, and I've always wanted. There are people who struggle with Mother's Day because they've lost their mother. There are orphans who struggle with Mother's Day because they've never known their mother. People come from all sorts of backgrounds, and so this isn't just a day of celebration, which it is. But it's also a day of weeping. And so I I want us to be careful. There's a woman who... uh, who attends this church, who told me last week, hey, uh, I'm not going to be there uh, because it's Mother's Day and I really struggle with Mother's Day. And she told me that as she was leaving with the elementary school student that she brought to church that was not her own. That's what being a spiritual mother and father is about. And so what we need to recognize today is this call from Jesus and this call from Paul to be spiritual mothers, to be spiritual fathers. And I can tell you guys, uh, there are people in this room who have not been able to have children. And I hate that. I hate that you haven't been able to have your heart fulfilled in that arena. There are people here who have had miscarriages, who have trouble getting pregnant. There are people here who have lost their mother, and this is just a reminder of that. And with you, we weep. But I also want to say the responsibility is on you to be spiritual mothers to all these wonderful children in here, to show them what it means to follow Jesus. That is your charge today, to be the church, to not be like or to be like James 1.22, where James says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, so deceiving yourselves. Don't deceive yourself today. 
Don't say, yeah, this is another sermon that I've sat through where I hear the importance of surrendering to Jesus, of following him, of being a spiritual mother or father to this next generation, and leave these doors without going out into hermitage and pulling the little babies in here. God's kingdom depends on you. It's not just the pastors. God's kingdom depends on his church which is all of us together. So it's with that that we do get to enter into this wonderful time uh, of celebration uh, where we get to dedicate different families. And so uh, different families have decided to dedicate their babies. We're going to have a lot of moving parts here. Let me get a little situated. We're going to have a lot of moving parts, and so I ask for your forgiveness in this. Also, I haven't gotten together with all the families to let them know kind of what's going on. So that might be a little interesting, right? Uh, luckily, we're going in order from youngest baby to oldest baby, okay? And, uh, and so we're going to get to experience this pretty early on. Uh, first off, I would love to introduce August Hayes Boss who was born on May 3rd, and he is the son of Keegan and Mary Bost. And so y'all give it up for them. This precious new baby. Justin has a gift for all of you uh, parents who decided to dedicate your children. Um, and so, uh, guys, we're so excited to be doing this. Oh my gosh, he is so precious. Yeah, y'all can come down. Go have a seat over there. King, you can stand behind Mother Mary, okay? <laughs> Next up, I would like to welcome to the stage another first-time baby in here, Judah Ward Hilton, who is the son of John and Autumn Hilton. Little Judah is fresh as well. Judah was born on April 16th. 2023. So we have two babies here that are less than a month old. We love you. It's my first time seeing him in person too. Oh gosh, look at that face. John, it's a good thing he looks like Autumn, not you. Just kidding, ma'am. Just kidding. Next up, I would like to welcome uh, Campbell and Elena Forrest with Michael Dean Forrest. Michael was born on November 22nd, 2022, and that dude looks just like his daddy, and he has a big old smile. You need to smile at these people, right? Look at him. Okay. That's great. Next up, and like I said, we're going from oldest to youngest. It gets a little confusing here, okay, so forgive me. I'm going to call up Patrick, uh, Patrick and Brittany Jones with their precious little baby, Violet Faith Jones. Y'all get it up for, for Patrick and Brittany. And little Violet. Violet was born on October 22nd, 2022. Hey, they're precious. Next up, was that, was that right, Brittany? It was not right. Well, is that not what I said? I'm so, October 28th, 2022 is when precious little Violet was born, okay? Um, the reason that it's a little confusing here is because our next baby was also born on October 28th, 2022. I'm not sure which one won the race, but uh, next up, come on Mambo and Mashite Bachuma with their precious little son. Isaiah is number six for the Bachuma family. And so, yeah, yeah. So they, they're pros by now. They got it all handled. Uh, and this is Isaiah Richard Bachuma and little Bridgie. Bridgie, hey girl, how are you? Up next, we have uh, welcome Paige and Coleman Roach. Yeah, Paige, yeah, Coleman. And this sweet little boy, 
Their son is Baker James Roach, and Mr. Baker was born on May 24th, 2022. So he's about to be a year old, dude. Man, yeah. Up next, we have Alex, Allie, and Amelia Cox, okay? Go ahead, come on up here, Alex and Allie and Amelia. Look at her, my goodness. Every time she's in our little preschool room, little Amelia, well, Allie, Allie helps with our 9 a.m. services. I'll go in there to see Amelia and go, hey, girlfriend. And so I, little dan I dance with you, don't I? I dance with you, don't I? Yeah. Amelia was born on Mar March 7th, 2022, so she turned a year in March 7th. Is uh, Luke and Rachel Deal here? Luke and Rachel Deal, I know I hadn't seen you guys. I do want to honor them. We have a gift for them as well. Uh, Luke and Rachel have Jackson Gibson Deal, and his birthday was December 12th, 2019. And I had somebody earlier uh, ask me, how many, how many pregnant mamas do we have? I don't know, a lot, okay? And so uh, I can tell you that um, babies are being born here, and it's wonderful. Parents, mamas, daddies, thank you guys so much for being willing to come here and say, I want to make sure that we make church a priority for our, our children. And, and you have come here today saying that you want to present your child to the Lord. And that's a beautiful thing. Here in a second, we have a few charges for you guys. Um, I know I haven't spoken with all of you. I have different charges for you guys. To, if you agree with it, say we do. Okay, it's simple, it's simple enough. It's just like your vows. If you mess those up, that's okay. It's your second chance. All right, you can do it with your kids here. All right. They're going to be on the screen in the back, the dummy screen, okay? And so uh, you, can, you can look at there, read along with me, whatever. They're also going to be up here, okay? So charge to you parents, again, if you agree with this charge, parents, just say we do in response, okay? Charge number one, do you acknowledge that your child is a gift from God? Parents, do you commit to modeling a godly life before your child? Walking in relationship with the Lord so that your child will have an example to follow? Do you commit to verbally sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with your child so that he or she will have the opportunity to have a personal relationship with Christ? Parents, do you commit yourself to raise your child in the instruction and discipline of the Lord? Do you promise to disciple your child, teaching them to obey Christ, make disciples, and be evangelists to the world? Last one, parents. Hopefully it's not been too hard for you guys, okay? Do you promise to make church a priority for your family? not neglecting to meet together so that the community of believers can come alongside you in raising your child. Awesome. Now, if you're not a parent dedicating your child today, you're not off the hook. The reason parents have brought these beautiful children before the church is to say, I wanna give them to the Lord, and part of giving them to the Lord is giving them to the body of Christ. And so you have responsibilities to these children as well as all the other children in this worship gathering today. You have responsibilities as the body of Christ that we just talked about to lead them in the ways of the Lord. And so church, I have some charges to you to be the church of Jesus Christ. And you're going to see these charges on the screen that again, if you agree to them, Make it known by saying we do. And I hope that you don't take this commitment lightly, okay? The first charge to you, church. Do you as the body of Christ promise to support these parents in the rearing of their children? 
Will you work alongside these parents in dis, uh, discipling their children individually, using your God-given talents and abilities for the building up of God's kingdom? Do you commit to praying for the salvation and sanctification of these children? Lastly, I don't want you to take this one lightly either. Do you commit to tithing to the storehouse of this church so that we as the body of Christ can continue to invest in the spiritual, mental, emotional, and social development of these children? Amen. These commitments that you've just committed to hopefully aren't said willy-nilly. And the wonderful thing is right now you have a chance to put those words into action. At first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite Pastor Daniel Kincaid, who's part of our children's programmer, uh, Miss Gwen Dobson, who is our preschool VBS director, PDO director, if she's in here, Miss Gwen Dobson. And then, yo, Gwen, hey, how'd you get up here? And then, of course, Pastor Justin, let, we're, if you all would stand, we're going to pray over these parents. And we believe here at New Hope Hermitage that discipleship begins in the cradle. That it's never too early to begin sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with a person, with a child. And so we're gonna take a few minutes. If you wanna stretch out your hands, if you wanna lift your arms, whatever, we're going to pray over these parents and their children. And then we have another opportunity to sing a song of prayer over them as well. If you would, pray with me. Father, we thank you for this holy moment. God, we can put our feet to work praying for these families. God, I thank you so much for the, the hearts of the parents, the way your Holy Spirit has fallen upon them. Father, the way they desire to present their child to you. God, I pray for strength for these parents, for wisdom and discernment as they rear this child up in you. Father, we know that none of them are perfect, but you are. And we trust you as the perfect God to lead God and direct them, Father. And soften their hearts and their ears to be more in tune with your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for the salvation and sanctification of these babies. God, we thank you for the opportunity to dedicate them to you. And I can't wait for the day we get to enter into these baptismal waters as they surrender to you, Father. God, may you be glorified in this church's obedience to fulfill your great commission. May you be glorified in this church's decision to be spiritual mothers and fathers over these babies that we've dedicated and all of our next gen ministry. Father, may you raise up leaders who teach the youngest to the oldest what it means to follow you. May we be a church and a people who craves more of you, Father, who follows sound biblical teaching. God, who, may we be a people who don't just go to church, but we run to you as you perfect us and make us into your image. Father, we thank you for these beautiful gifts of children. Father, we pray a prayer of protection over all the pregnant mothers that we have. Father, for those of us in this room today who are struggling because we haven't experienced this, may you comfort us. God, may you give us strength and encouragement and love. May we be able to see your purpose and plan for our lives. God, we know that not everything in this life that we want to happen, happens. But we trust in you. We trust in you to, to give us everything that we need. And to lead God and direct us. Father, may you be glorified and honored 
throughout the life of this church and throughout the lives of these children. We love you, Father. It's in Christ's holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. May you join us in worshiping with this prayer. The canons want to lead us in. May that continue to be your prayer. That in these children's coming and their going, and their weeping and rejoicing throughout the stages of life, that they will continue to be protected by God our Savior and continue to follow the pathway that He's leading them on. Parents, thank you guys so much for being here, for being committed, and for committing your children this church. If you guys wouldn't mind, we're going to continue on in worship. Y'all give these parents a hand. You guys can go ahead and go on down. We are going to continue in worship. We've already had part of our worship with action. We've gotten to sing this prayer over our children. Now you have different ways to respond. Whether that's by giving, by surrendering, by coming up here and, and writing a prayer request and, and putting it at the foot of the cross, by taking communion. I don't know how the Lord is calling you to respond today. 
Maybe it's just by recognizing that church doesn't stop in 13 minutes. Church isn't a Sunday 1030 kind of event. Church is your life. And so may today, may you have been encouraged to take what we've discussed today into Hermitage, into Donaldson, into Mount Juliet, because we desire for Hermitage to look like heaven. And you guys are the soldiers to make that happen. So however you need to respond, may you respond the way the Spirit is calling.
one time. My heart is yours. My heart is yours forever. Amen, church. Amen. If you don't mind, man, will you give it up one more time for all our families today? These children, this beautiful picture. And give it up for Pastor Will, who brought today's message that reminded us, yeah, so good. That our preaching is in vain if it does not lead to action. Man, we don't want to just inspire, we want to lead to action. That means we get an opportunity to live the love of Jesus out here and offer hope to hermitage it takes our investment though it takes our investment not just to give our time and our talent but to give our treasure and you have opportunity to do that before you leave today in the box back or online safely where I promise you I promise you every dime we're going to advance the gospel because that's our only hope we're not here giving opinion like he told us we trust Jesus changes lives we're living proof of that. And that is hope for hermitage to look a little more like heaven when we go out today and offer the hope of Jesus. Today, live like Jesus. Be generous like Jesus. Love like Jesus has loved you. Amen? Lord, we thank you. We ask blessing and favor upon everyone here and everyone who's watching online, no matter if they're watching in Europe, God in Florida, North Carolina, on the other coast, we just ask that wherever we inhabit, we would see heaven here on earth. We love you. Blessings and favor on these as they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Moms and the women of the room, can we give up one more time for the mother to hear? Yeah. Happy Mother Day. And do not forget, the photo booth is out here to my right in the foyer. Your left, take advantage. We'll get the photos to you if you just leave your email on the Connect card. Thank you. Be blessed.